You're listening to Expat Sandwich. I'm Marty Walker. This is the second installment of our series, Culture Shock Flashback. Think of it as where we basically turn expat sandwich on its head. Instead of hearing from American expats, we give foreign nationals an opportunity to tell their side of the story, to share what it's like to leave your homeland in order to live in the United States. And in this episode, we look at that experience through a French lens. According to the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, out of all French expats, 13% live in the United States. That's roughly 140,000 people, mostly living in coastal cities such as New York, San Francisco, and Miami. Oddly enough, I found a couple of French expats living here in Dallas. It turns out there's about three to 4,000 of them, actually. My name is uh, Charlotte Pine. Uh, I've been uh, living in the U.S. for five years and a few months. When it comes to wine, Charlotte and her British husband really know their way around the French wine industry. Wine production is France's second largest export sector, and both of them have years of experience. I've met my husband in a first wine business called uh, Chapoutier uh, in the Hermitage uh, Rhone Valley. Three years after that, we moved to Burgundy. And I worked for another company in a very small village called Nuit Saint-Georges, so very French. And there I worked uh, in marketing and logistics as well. So I sent wine to the U.S. Very complicated as well to to send wine in the U.S. Charlotte's husband travels all over the country selling French wine. So having a central location with a good airport has been key for them. And speaking of airports... Meet Laurent. He's from Paris and studied and worked in Aerospace Valley. It's like a Silicon Valley in the U.S. and is located near Toulouse and Bordeaux. Aerospace and aviation is France's biggest export sector. Laurent moved to Dallas 20 years ago and currently runs his own company. I work in aviation, and my main specialty is the the flight data, all the data that goes to the the black box, the crash recorder, which is actually orange. Never understood why they call it the black box, go figure. But more and more, I'm just uh, on on the software and the services nowadays. Every commercial airline, they have to review the flight from every single pilot. All the flights have to go under review with a software that is going to trigger automatically all the mistakes, the safety mistakes that they made during the flight. And that that's really has been my passion for at least 16 years now. When Laurent first arrived in Texas, he lived in a suburb of Arlington called Grand Prairie. He knew there would be culture shock, but wasn't quite prepared for this. When people call themselves proudly redneck, and that's, uh, yeah, that didn't come too well with the way I think. <laughs> Basically uh, insulting themselves and being proud of it. Charlotte's arrival, on the other hand, had a different type of challenge. In Dallas, when I arrived after the immigration, even somebody telling me hello or how are you or things like that, I was, uh, I don't get, I don't understand, I'm sorry, <laughs> you need to repeat what you just said. It was a bit, yeah, that was a bit um, overwhelming. On the phone, I had to do the, all the electricity, the gas, the water, I had to call. Uh, myself because my husband was too busy with his work and sometimes over the phone the people told me the price or when it's going to begin I, I didn't get it I was saying yes yes can I give you my my email and and you can send me all the information or what do I need to do because sometimes I didn't get it I didn't know uh, just <laughs> but it, it got better 
if someone talks to me, I won't be afraid anymore. Uh, so I can talk to them, even if they don't understand me, but it's fun because most of the time they say, oh, I like your accent. Okay, sometimes I don't want to talk with them, but <laughs> at least I, I can answer and they, they explain to me their story as well. And it's interesting. I've, I've met a lot of very interesting people uh, in Dallas. the town doctor. I'm kidding. Just some real estate guy. The U.S. doesn't track the sale of guns. The only way to get a feel for legal gun sales is to look at the required background checks. And that number in 2016, according to the FBI, over 27 million background checks in one year, the highest ever recorded. In France, there isn't any right to bear arms. And to own a gun, you need a hunting or sporting license, which needs to be repeatedly renewed and requires psychological evaluation. That doesn't mean France doesn't struggle with illegal guns. Getting caught with one can get you seven years in prison. But given the fact that Texas is an open carry state, I was curious to know if the relaxed gun laws in the U.S. made Charlotte and Laurent uneasy. In France, you don't you don't have guns. It's not allowed. You can't bring a gun to school or even in your car. It's not allowed. So sometimes I feel a bit stressed about that, like uh, someone could, if I do something wrong on the road, perhaps he could bring out his gun, perhaps I'm wrong, but yes, sometimes I'm thinking about that. Like, it's like any cities or places in the world, there's there's neighborhoods, you know, you're not supposed to go and just don't go. Uh, the only thing where I, and I feel safe also because I, I never seen anything, believe it or not, in 20 years. I never, I didn't even witness a fight, literally. So I'm feeling safe. But where I'm not feeling safe at all is knowing that anyone can be carrying a gun and that uh, a simple argument can get me shot or a lost bullet of two other people having an argument. That part, I don't feel safe uh, one bit. Besides an abundance of guns, there's also an excess of patriotism. MAGA, Make America Great Again, the campaign slogan of the current U.S. president. According to the National Flag Foundation, 50 million American flags on average are sold each year. And this year, current demand is expected to double sales to 100 million flags. I wanted to know how the French regard patriotism in their own country. I would love to put a French flag in my uh, front yard in France. But if you do that, uh, people can say, are you crazy? What are you doing? Uh, you, don't, you don't put a flag. Only you put a flag if there is a soccer game, <laughs> but not just not to show that you like France. What I can feel in the U.S., it's your, you are very proud of your country. That's different. You put the flag outside a lot for anything. You show people in your front yard uh, if you want to vote, uh, the, the candidate you want to vote for, even on your car. We are proud um, of our country differently, more about the history and not what's happening right now in France. We are not as, uh, yes, as proud as American. Everybody being raised since they are two years old to be a good, uh, a good patriot. You get the message constantly. You see the military everywhere. I mean, hell, you even see them at every game opening for sport, which to me, I mean, when you come from my education, that's almost being in a fascist country when you see that. I'm not even talking about Trump. That's really the way I've been feeling that for 20 years. It's uh, this patriotic thing is, uh, uh, I just don't get it. It's too close to, to fascism to me. The funny thing about living in Texas is that 
99% of people who visit here for the first time, they comment on how friendly everybody is. And I'm always surprised by that because when you live here, you just don't think about it because it's just the way it is. What I like the best, people were so nice. They were asking me, how are you? So after I, I got it, but I, and they were very nice with my kids, like, oh, your kids, uh, they are cute, etc. The, fir- the first time I was worried because in France you won't hear that or not like that from a stranger. And even one man asked me, can I help you with your grocery to put that in the car? And I said, no, thank you, because I was worried. In France, you don't do that. Nobody, ha- nobody asks you that. And after a few weeks, uh, after a few weeks, I was very happy if someone uh, told me, oh, can I help you? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> or do you need help in the shop? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> you get used to it. <laughs> a very big change from France. That's also what I like the least, the, uh, the way people are actually too friendly. Reason being that when you scratch a bit the surface, more often than not, they are not as friendly as it seems. And for all of that friendliness, Laurent struggles to understand this aspect of American culture. In my humble opinion, the people here are probably the most generous people on Earth. You can see it whenever there's a disaster. It's always the American people sending the most amount of money. However, when it's their neighbor or the homeless in their neighborhood or whatever, there's nobody left. And I have to say, I've always been really puzzled by that. While Charlotte is married, raising two children... Laurent is single and notices differences between the two countries when it comes to approaching romance. I don't know, sometimes you're going to find all the hypocritical game of the dating system, which doesn't exist in France. And then another night, you're just going to be in a bar, and you're the guy, and that's the, basically the woman harassing you. And for a French guy, it's, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> and it usually means run away as well <laughs> so it's kind of um, I don't know I never felt comfortable on this in, uh, in not even going as far as sex uh, it's, I was saying that because the wine night stand here are so common whereas uh, in France uh, good luck to find a wine night stand basically but again we don't have this dating system 50% of the time it's just somebody jumping on you and it almost feels like harassment if you're a Frenchman we were rather on the shy side once with your somebody there's no more shyness it's uh, it goes away almost right away but uh, the whole process before there's a lot of games with looking at each other seeing if you're catching a few smiles there's there's a lot of preparation until you're even going to dare to go and talk, talk to a woman in France and there's, I think, also the fear of rejection that we, we don't take too well in France. So when, when we go for it, there's been all this preparation and basically we're, we kind of know that it's going to go well. And then there's the food. The French appreciate how and where food is grown or raised, as well as the way it's prepared. I've always wondered how the French are able to manage being away from all the wonderful cheeses, boulangeries, and expertly prepared savory dishes. I love, uh, I love steak, and honestly, they are so good. Perhaps they are full of hormones. You know what? Sometimes I don't care, <laughs> but, but uh, they are so good, <laughs> so good. Chicken fried steak. When it's made with real fine steak, and uh, like, like your, like your mom will do it basically. But yeah, that plus the gravy, uh, which sounds really weird for a French guy, but. 
it drove me nuts. I'm a big, big fan. Not a, a fan of uh, Mexican food, but because in France we don't have that kind of food. And I tried Subway and I didn't like it. I, I love their advert. It looks good, but it's not real food. Cheesecake and anything with cinnamon. Both of them are really acquired taste. And uh, the texture itself, the consistency of the cheesecake, to almost make a French guy who wants to puke immedi immediately. But it's really not just me. It's, uh, I talk to so many French people. Cheesecake, so no, I found a few of them who, who liked it. Cinnamon, never. While Laurent seems to be more focused on the food itself, Charlotte weighs in on the social and service aspects around meals and dining out. So I love the service because, once again, so different from France. They are very happy to, they, they give you their name, uh, they say, uh, I will help you, etc. But when, in France, when you finish eating, they don't come as soon as you finish your plate. They don't take your plate. They wait for everybody to be finished and then they take your plate. But here, as soon as you put your knife and fork on the side, they say, it's even working on it. And I said, I don't work on my plate. I like my plate. It's not a work for me to eat. <laughs> so please calm down. Or they don't even ask if you want a coffee. Not everywhere, but most of the time, they don't even ask if you, if you want a dessert or a coffee. So they have the check on your table and your friend or, or even yourself, you don't even, you didn't even finish your plate. So it's too quick. It's you know, French people, we like to take time. Even if we don't have the time, we just take time to eat and to enjoy and to talk about anything. But no, it's too fast for me. <laughs> In France, you eat dinner between seven and eight, perhaps it's too late. I agree. But uh, I think it's so early to eat at 5.30. Yeah. Then what do you do? You eat more, uh, more uh, in front of the TV later. Most of my American friends they say, "Oh, you sit down with your kids for lunch and dinner." I said, "Of course I do. We don't eat all of all around the house uh, like that." And they say, oh, "No, us. We don't have the time because we go to the soccer game. We go to the basketball game. We do that stuff, but not as much as you. So we eat lunch and dinner if we can all together." sitting down at the table and uh, and that's it that's the rules that's where we that's where we speak about our morning our day or that's what we do if you've ever wondered what it would be like to work for a french company or to have french colleagues laurent shares some of his observations the things i notice most is that people really work better here as a team France, it's very difficult to work in any team. And if you have more than one team involved from several departments, uh, basically, war is going to ensue. And on top of it, even through your educational system, there's so much uh, sport involved and uh, team sport. Uh, whereas in France, there's very little time dedicated to sport that I think it also developed a lot, those, um, those teamwork uh, habits that, uh, that we don't have in France. There's really the habits of the French to always debate, to always criticize, uh, and to always complain as well, without doing anything to solve the issue so this way they can keep. Debating and complaining, that, that's the national sport, literally. <laughs> and, and as opposed to here, it's very open. Everybody is, um, there's a lot of argument. People can raise the, their voice, but everybody listen. Here, when you start debating, as soon as one is running out of argument, it turns super aggressive or the people are leaving the conversation, literally. And even though we have much more vacations and we work way less hours, and believe it or not, the, the production per capita uh, in France is much higher than in the US. They are work to death in a way because everybody, I mean, at, at least past a certain level uh, of responsibilities, it's uh, even if you don't have 
anything to do, people are going to pull extra hours because the boss is still here. Uh, but it's more that once they go, I mean, they, they've been speaking so much, debating so much, etc., etc. Once they finally work, they do they do the stuff super fast, and they are very qualified. Whereas here, I've always been surprised by how unqualified people can be at their position. It's it works because it's always teamwork. Again, at the end of the day, I think that's the magic of this country. The teamwork works so well that uh, it, even if the people don't have the, the proper education for their position or the, the right competencies or qualities, they still, they still manage. That's going to wrap it up for us. Special thanks to Paramount Pictures for the Rustler's Rhapsody clip. Thanks to Patreon members Louise Walker, Tim Hurst, Jay Shen, and at Honorable Husband. We are incredibly appreciative of your generous support. And like always, we'll have all of this and more in our show notes on our website at expatsandwich.com. Expat Sandwich is produced by Marty Walker. 